How do you define humanity? Is being born as a human enough to explain humanity? According to most sources, humanity often refers to the human nature, kindness. Humanity actually means the kind and compassionate feelings that humans have or should have for each other. That means the feelings that allows or encourages one person to help another person. It's nothing but an act of being helpful rather than being agents of the devils for one's own material gain. Okay, it's an act of tirelessly, wholeheartedly striving to give another person what they don't have. A hope to the hopeless, a home to the homeless, and yet expecting nothing in return. I'd like to go a bit deeper and add to it my perspective where I think I would like to say that the feeling of kindness and compassion extends to all living things not only humans. You see, humanity and humans are two different things. You and I are human, congrats. But do we have what it takes to project humanity? Humanity as a whole is a state of being where kindness and compassion rules our thoughts, words and actions towards all living things. And it is discovering this definition that I've dedicated my life and all the work that I do all the activities in my chosen field. I am Dr. Madhusudan, also known as the Teddy Bear Doctor of Malaysia. I co-founded the Teddy Mobile Clinic where my team and I provide free medical care for the underprivileged community, especially to the homeless community. So all that I am doing using my Teddy Mobile Clinic, my interaction with other people, my interaction with other living things is to discover the various thoughts, words and actions that people have to exhibit humanity in all that they do. See, I do not want to use the word charity and donation. I prefer to use the word giving and sharing because charity and donation implies an air of condescension. That I am here and you are there. But as humans, I am here and you are here. We are equal. I have chosen a source of income. I have chosen to have a set a place and time to provide me with certain resources so that I can share with my fellow human beings that require my humanity. See, they need not my money, they require my humanity. And that's how I view the people that I've met and helped. Therefore, I run a clinic in KL with a set time and location, and my clinic, which is also a collection center of groceries, where I get to share with the people whatever I've collected. Okay, today I'm going to talk to you all about the people who need sharing and caring in the domains of physical needs, emotional needs, and mental needs. So let us talk about the physical needs first. So I'm going to give you an example of the family that I've helped. Okay, let me name him Mr. A for easy understanding. Okay. So Mr. A suffers from chronic diabetes. And due to his poorly controlled diabetes condition, he has already lost one of his legs. Got it amputated from the knee below. And even on his another leg, two of his toes has already been amputated. His wife passed away several years ago. His eldest daughter is currently only in Form 3 and the younger son is only in Senate 4. And due to his current condition, he is unable to work and provide for his family. And he does not have any family members or any relatives who are willing to take care of him. And them, sorry. So this is where my team and I came into the picture. See, when I hand my humanity in the physical domain, first I want them to realize that the physical disabilities that they have is not the sum total of their life. Okay. Of course, I'm a doctor. Okay. As a doctor, of course, I have to treat their bodies first. But I'm not just a doctor. I'm a human being first. And from one human being to another human being, I've got to make them realize that they are far more than just the body. That there's dignity to them. That this body have to be treated as long as possible as long as possible because within it holds a life that is full of dignity. See, a person can laugh and be happy despite of not having both limbs because a person's happiness is not fully dependent on a totally fit or disease-free body. Especially these people who are in a vulnerable position. For example, the homeless and for those, uh, those who are being neglected. The minute there's a physical issue with their body, they lose hope and they think that they have been sidelined to die. And that is not how I view humanity. And that's not my perspective of humanity. 
my perspective of humanity is yes they may have a physical disabled body but they can still love they can still be happy they can still enjoy life they can see me smile i can see them smile and enjoy and i'm going to do this as long as the universe allows me to do within my capacity so now let us move to the emotional aspect okay i'm sure you'd have heard the number of suicide cases and the number of depression cases that are happening all around us especially during this pandemic for various reasons okay let us not go in detail of the reasons but people are depressed for something you and i may not be depressed about i want to be there for them just to reach out to me to hold their hands that's all see i'm not interested in knowing why i do not want to know why are they depressed i do not want to know why are they sad if they don't want to tell me but i want them to know that i am there for them to hold their hands and that is what humanity is all about to hold one's hand without knowing why must we know why why can't you hold your hands just because they are stretching out their hands to you right the previously there were so many cases under the physical domain but lately the number of cases under the emotional domain have been multiplying at an exponential rate okay take a look around us say i do not mean any of you but take a look around there's so many people out there who are lacking with humanity people of all ages people of all ethnicities people of all backgrounds for no rhyme or reason for so far there's no smile and even if i smile there's no return smile of course not now love because we all wear masks but even before covid and that is a very painful thing you don't need to touch someone to smile covid doesn't spread to smile but how often do you see people going around giving a smile or returning a smile why is it that this tiny little virus has taken away our humanity from us why have we allowed it to steal our humanity from us see the truth is by following the proper sops by taking proper precaution and safety measures we can still express our humanity and that is what our frontliners have been doing you would have heard stories after stories of our frontliners standing out there making all kinds of sacrifices just to make sure that they are safe see i have been encouraged i have been given hope by many of them how they were exhibiting their humanity especially our frontliners but i am more concerned about the millions who are allowing it to disappear. So in my line of work in my chosen field of work I see this small group of people that I feel that I can make a difference especially my friends my close ones my family members okay so I'll give you an example okay these examples are not made up it's really it really happened to me several weeks ago I called a friend of mine to wish him to just wish him happy birthday I have not spoken to him for some time but I knew that it sound didn't sound like him he sounded kind of depressed but I didn't want to ask him why and after some time he said uh, bro i'm actually not in the right set of mind now but i'm not going to tell you why and what happened but for now i'm still okay and i'm not going to tell you where am i to i said it's okay bro i do not want to know where are you but i still want to wish you a happy birthday because i'm happy for the day you were born the day you came into my life i'm happy that you are another person that have come into my life and made my life richer and you have made a difference in my life i assure you that see why can't we tell everyone that we know or that we have met that you have made a difference in my life and for that one moment let him be happy that one moment let him feel that he has made See, it's okay. He may die today or tomorrow. This is the cycle of life. But for that one moment, he was happy, and that is what humanity is all about. That is humanity. See, I do not believe that that is the end of life. My philosophy doesn't allow me to believe it. I believe that it's a changing of life. It's a transformation. I do not want to go through life thinking that oh, that person is going to die. End of story. I go through life knowing that every transformation brings about a better change in everyone that I meet a change for the better see he may not know it but I know it I have a conviction that the universe is kind that god is merciful that god is love 
And that is what humanity is all about because we were all made in the image of God. Every religion says that. See, we were made to be happy. We were made to be loved. We were made to be loving. Then why do we need to go around with a long face making everyone else feel miserable when some of them are already miserable, right? Okay, let us now go through mental health. Okay, this is those who have lost hope lost their jobs and lost their sole income, sole source of income. Okay, this brings me to a point where I would like to enlighten about the white flag movement. I'm sure you would have heard of the white flag movement. Okay, this movement was started in Malaysia by a group of youth in Kuantan who lost their friend, lost their very close friend to suicide due to financial difficulties. Okay, and it all started amidst the spiking cases of COVID in Malaysia and the news of this movement spread like wildfire all over the media. Okay. Basically, in this movement, anyone who is in need of help is required to, especially in the sense of food, is required to raise a white flag in front of their homes. And anyone in the capacity to help could extend a helping hand. Okay. It is just to make sure that all our brothers and sisters of the nation get the ends to meet. Is to make sure that no one is left behind. However, there are a few mouths that are going around and saying that this movement is an epitome of desperation and surrender. Okay. What does this white flag actually mean? Why, this white flag actually means it's a conquest of the ego. It doesn't mean begging. It doesn't mean surrendering. It just means I'm someone who's capable of giving back to the community, but just right now, I require a bit of help. And I'll be really grateful if you could help me. That's all. It doesn't mean that you're down and you're gone. Okay, how does it feel to raise the right flag? How does it feel to know that at the end of the month, there's no money that's going to come in for you to buy things and put on the table? Okay, if you accept that thing, oh, there's no money that's going to come in at the end of the month. And suddenly you hear of people giving out things, giving you all this kind of support. That is God sending you a boat to tithe for the next few months. Right? See, you can do it if you want to. You need to strengthen. You need the belief that you can do it. Okay. See, what do you need? You need food on the plate. And you need a place to stay. Okay. Many people have been thinking that they have been living so well and so comfortably and if they don't live in the same comfort, they are gone. But no, you should start from the scratch. You should start with the fundamentals. And together, with our help, with the support from people, I'm sure you can go through this. There's always a place for you to start. See, look at the mental strength of the people whom I'm talking about, especially those who have lost their jobs. If you can see these aspects of humanity and realize that all these are actually simple opportunities for us to express our humanity, we have won it all, we, including COVID. See, today there may be COVID, but tomorrow it will be something else. It's not the end, it's the process, it's part of the process. But this humanity will exist as long as there is God, because Humanity is God. See, none of us has seen God face to face. Right? Okay, but to, to that one person whose wound you mended, regardless of the fact that his limb may go, at that moment you are his God. To that one friend whom you said, I love you, bro, you have made a difference in my life, for that person at that moment you are his God. For the person whom you said, okay, you may have lost you may have lost your job now, but you will definitely get a job soon and I am here to help you get through this. For that person you are his God. So humanity is God, isn't it? That is my philosophy in my own simple way. Nothing great. Thank you everyone.